Good afternoon, and thanks for having me along. I'm representing uh, a much wider research team. Uh, so Liz Gallagher was the research associate who worked on the project. Dr. Lawrence Taggart is also with us today from Ulster University. Siobhan Neal is one of our professors of psychology at Ulster University. Angela is from University College London, and Paul Webb is, works with Praxis in Northern Ireland. So we wanted to get a, a, a range of people involved. And the project really was looking at, our question was very much around when people largely leave hospital and they are living in community settings, some services manage to maintain people very well in the community and our services have admissions to specialist hospitals for people with learning disability. And this project was largely designed by Dr. Eben Slevin, who used to work for the university. Uh, and we were interested in what's the difference between those two services. Why do some people manage to maintain, some services manage to maintain people, other services? Uh, not, not so much. So just some definitions uh, very quickly to, to get these clarified. Uh, the term challenging behaviour as we use it is those behaviours which might be dangerous to the individual uh, themselves or to others. Such behaviours include uh, actions to be considered inappropriate in society generally. So they're of a, of a severity and a frequency that actually make it very difficult for people to use local services. Um, one of the things that's very important about challenging behaviour is that it's considered to be behaviour which challenges a service. It's not people with learning disabilities have challenging behaviour, but people present a behaviour which challenges a service. Uh, so that's an important uh, aspect of it. Definition of mental health is clinical recognisable patterns, psychosocial symptoms and behaviours, uh, and linked to acute or chronic ill health, personal distress, or to distress in others. So these are the two definitions that we used. And one of the drivers for this, and I've mentioned uh, Dr. Slevin, is that he had done some work earlier on, and Lawrence had been involved in work in our time. And what we, we were very clear of is that the majority of admissions to hospital, um, and we're thinking here on the three hospitals for people with learning disabilities in Northern Ireland, were linked to either the presence of behaviours that challenge or to mental health problems. And that was the, 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 the main reasons for admission. In the work that we looked at, and one of the things that came up very early on was the, the importance of staff culture. So a lot of attention prior to this had been paid to levels of education that people had and levels of training they had and what they thought about where they worked. But there was a growing body of evidence that actually said the culture of the area in which people worked was very important. So in particular, uh, what staff considered to be the causes of challenging behaviour the emotional reaction of staff to such behaviours, the confidence of staff in dealing with behaviours, uh, and aspects of the system such as the environment in which care staff were, were working and how effective that was. So as well as the, the type of behaviour and the type of challenge that the person may present, it, we were very interested in the environment in which people worked and where those factors uh, which were potentially changeable. So there was quite a pile of study objectives, but very much followed on from what we've talked about. We wanted to look at staff perceptions of behaviour and mental health characteristics. Staff perceptions related to community participation and leisure activities, because one of the big challenges for people who have quite distressed behaviours or opportunity to be included in society is, is very much impacted upon. Levels of staff training, because that's something that's often talked about. The more trained your staff are and the more educated they are, the more able they are. Uh, the, what people believed caused challenging behaviour. So was it genetic? Was it be, no, a learnt behaviour? Was it part of having a learning disability? Uh, emotional reactions of staff, self-confidence of staff, and then were there any things, were there things in the environment? So we took some measures of the environment. So not going into detail now, but they're, in, they're listed in the appendix of the paper, and I'm very happy to uh, have Lawrence explain them later. Uh, there was nine instruments used to collect a lot of the data around the levels of behaviour the, the, and, and compare people across. Stage two was we wanted to bring that information together. Uh, very much to, this is a qualitative piece of the work, to identify the most salient factors in staff and residential supported living services and what, what managers perceive as helping to support the person who is challenging behaviour and mental health problems. So as well as all of the 
quantitative data, we also wanted to uh, have interviews with people and explore it. So this is probably not readable from there, uh, but to a residential facilities project, as we call it, stage one was a quantitative. So what happened there is that we got information from the hospitals about uh, people who had been admitted. What we were told is somebody has been admitted from this particular unit. We then contacted that unit and we gathered information on the whole scale of, of questionnaires that we've talked about around their behavior, uh, around aspects of their mental health, uh, and also the attributes of staff and social support. We've done that for the people who were admitted. We had two of the key workers fill that in uh, for, for each of the individuals. And we then tried to match the individuals. So we had the, the age, the gender, the general level of ability, and the general, general level of challenge that were presented by those individuals. And we then uh, sought to match that individual with an R person who was successfully maintained in the community in an R unit. So someone roughly the same age, same gender, same level of behavioral challenges. Uh, the second part that we've talked about here was the qualitative focus groups. So we had, we'll go on to look at them, we had focus groups uh, with clients which we'll come to. So in stage one, just for some numbers, uh, so 78 people were admitted over the, 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 the 2012-2014, uh, so it should be over the three year period. Uh, and we were able to match those 78 people with 43 people who were maintained in the community. Uh, and overall, across those people, we had 465 questionnaires filled in. So each of the individuals had multiple questionnaires filled in around them and by different informants within their service. So we gathered a lot of information, a lot of data. Also held focus groups with service managers, staff who worked in the services, family members, our client representatives, and service users. And what I am very much focusing on was the focus groups and the work we've done with the admissions group in Northern Ireland, the place maintained group of people in Northern Ireland. But we also, um, because of our connections with King's College, were able to do some interviews within services in London to see if the experiences here were uh, consistent with their experiences. So across the focus groups, um, 13 managers were interviewed, 14 staff, main service user, family members or client reps and 28 individual service users uh, participated in the focus groups. So as you can imagine, there's a large amount of quantitative information, which I haven't for today put up. But just in very quick summary, um, looking at the staff in the services, so the people with learning disabilities were largely the same. We'll come to there were some slight differences. But looking at the staff in the facilities, what we the, the questionnaires and the analysis would all show is that the services which would manage to maintain and support people with learning disabilities in the community. Um, interestingly, the staff in those services had less experience than the services that weren't able to maintain them. Uh, they had less knowledge about challenging behaviour and mental health problems. They had a much higher positive reaction to the presence of behaviours that challenged. They rated themselves as more confident they seen themselves as having more difficulty. They seen themselves as having a greater positive attitude towards working with people whose behaviour was quite distressing. They reported themselves as having more satisfaction in their job. Uh, they've seen themselves as having a higher sense of control uh, in the environment that they worked and they were listened to and they felt that if they had ideas that they would be listened to. Uh, they felt that they had appropriate resources in place even though the resources were not dramatically different from the other units, they viewed them as, as appropriate. They made more reference to communication as a technique. Uh, they related their manager's performance significantly more positively than the staff working in, in the, the units that were made up the admissions group. Um, and they particularly stated that their managers were more likely to be supportive and participative and achievement oriented. Uh, in the way that they manage the services. People with learning disabilities in both groups were very similar, but people who were admitted to hospital on the scales that we used were likely to have higher levels of behaviour that challenged, and more likely to have an organic mental health condition, but they were less likely to have an effective or a neur neurotic mental health condition, 
in comparison to people who were maintained. And one of the things that we've done in the analysis, we asked people, uh, in the, this part of the study, we asked people open questions, what would be your main techniques for supporting people? Uh, and what types of behaviours are, are, are present? So behaviours that were present in the people who were successfully maintained in the community included what would they, the class as aggression, destruction, slamming of doors, ripping clothes, verbal aggression, self-harm was a big part of it, um, abusive uh, behaviour, um, bad language, shouting, screaming, uh, outbursts and that sort of stuff. But when you then asked the um, staff and the group of people who were admitted to hospital what behaviours were present, they were quite similar. So, this, so staff rated the behaviours as quite similar. The uh, only difference is the, the appearance of the use of the word suicidal. Um, we then asked the staff uh, to tell us about the strategies that they used to manage challenging behaviour. And then the placement maintained group, uh, the main things that come up were communication, encouragement, training, some use of MAPA, which is a, a physical intervention or straight process if, it, if it's needed, but it wasn't a big part of it. Um, they talked about positive attitude, diversional techniques. Uh, they talked to some degree about medication and other diversional activities. So the bigger the word, the more often it was talked about. When you then looked at staff and the admissions groups and how they managed the challenge in behaviour, uh, medication, uh, PRN, uh, gets mentioned, which is again, as required medication, a lot more talk of uh, multidisciplinary teams, psychiatrists, de-escalation, psychologists. So it's quite a different feel for how the behaviour was managed, even though the behaviours on the face of it appear to be quite similar. So, they do. so you've got staff thinking differently and feeling differently, uh, and staff perceiving their approach to people quite differently. Leadership styles, uh, the top line is the rating of the leadership styles as they were described by the staff who worked in services of their managers. Um, so the directive wasn't big on both of them, but supportive, participatory, achievement orientated was coming out much higher uh, for those units that successfully maintained people. And that was manifest very much in people feeling that if they come forward with an idea about what they could do, it would be listened to, uh, it might be tried, uh, and there might be more opportunity to, to, to do things differently. Uh, so they had more flexibility, and, and in that way they felt more valued as members of staff seemed to be what we were getting. So the, then looking at the information from the focus groups and some of the open response to open questions, uh, we tried to come up with some themes. So the key factors that appear to be important in supporting people to maintain a placement in the community is, first of all, clear and supportive leadership. So it's not necessarily about staff training. It's not about courses that people are put on. It's the attention as to who's running the unit and what support they're providing. And that they, they seem to be a, a very key part. Now, the, the idea of leadership and culture has increasingly come up and how successful services are, and the attention to the preparation of, of managers and leaders. One of the things that really stood out in this is that, as we said earlier, we interviewed staff who worked in services, we interviewed managers themselves, we interviewed family members, and we interviewed people with learning disability. Uh, and we had focus groups with, with people. And where this really stood out is the units that successfully maintained people there was a very clear message coming across. People with learned this, but they felt they'd been listened to, uh, and they were, they were treated as, as individuals. The family, if they went along and had ideas or had thoughts, they felt they were listened to. Staff felt they were listened to. Uh, when you looked at the admissions group, you were more likely to see the family members were not particularly happy with their interaction with the service. There wasn't a lot of contact with them. Uh, you were more likely to see that they had suggested things that hadn't been taken on board and people with learning disabilities had stated things that they felt hadn't been taken on board or they weren't really been treated. So again, it was a big, big aspect of culture and how it was being set by managers. So clear support of leadership, connections between the staff uh, on a person-to-person -person basis 
working clearly with family members and having very proactive ways of engaging family members and paying attention to the staff team and not to their levels of training and the number of courses they've done, but paying attention to their level of confidence and how able they felt and how stressed they were feeling about what was happening. So that leads us to recommendations, largely at this stage focusing around managers of services. So managers of residential services at local and regional levels should create a strong sense of teamwork uh, by ensuring the team has a, an articulated clear vision of their work. So what's the, the culture, what's the priorities within that service? The development of leadership skills could be, should be considered as a priority for staff appointed under the rules at managed services. Often people get appointed under these rules and it's a natural progression. They may have been educated in one field of practice and then they find themselves in these management leadership roles and it's how much time and energy is invested in preparing them for those. Regionally agreed process for preparing people who are appointed in the management positions. At one level there is because they all have to hold some level of standardised qualifications but it's not about their qualifications, it's about how did you prepare them for the job after their qualifications because qualifications are not necessarily the most crucial thing. And people managing services uh, for individuals with intellectual disability who present challenges or mental health problems should recognise the need to work closely with families and they actively build relationships with families. And one of the things that, reasons that that's come out is very much important is that families could spot changes in behaviour very quickly. They could give information to people. They had seen some of this stuff before. And if they were listened to and that was taken on board, that tended to have a more positive outcome. So that's me. Thank you.